Hi guys, this is Drew, the SDSU EE Tutor, and in this video we're going to take a look at second order differential equations. More specifically, we're going to take a look at why we're getting these equations, because once you understand why we're getting these equations, I think the solutions come a little bit easier. So let's get started. So I first just want to start off and say that this is not a scary or crazily complex thing, okay? EE310 is just an extension of 210. We're still solving circuits the same way using mesh and node analysis, only now we're including capacitors and inductors and not just assuming that they're in steady state. So let's take a look at this. Alright, so these guys right here are your new best friends. Uh, more specifically, these equations. Okay, you should become very, very, very comfortable with these things over the course of the semester because this is the basis of why we end up with differential equations, right? So the current for a capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the change in voltage over time, right? This is a differential. This is why we end up with differential equations right there. Um, and then if you rearrange the equation, you can get... Uh, it in terms of voltage and you can say the voltage is equal to 1 over the capacitance uh, times the integral of the current right same thing this this is going to factor into giving us a differential equation because we're getting integrals and derivatives and yada yada right and you've got uh, a similar case for inductors you've got the voltage is equal to the inductance times the change in current over time and then you've got the current for an inductor is equal to 1 over the inductance times the integral of the voltage. All right, so these equations are your new best friends for this class. Okay, so let's put this all together. So say we're given this circuit, um, 10 volts, 10 volt battery, and then you've got a resistor, inductor, and capacitor. All right, so the switch closes. Switch closes. And now we're told to solve the circuit. All right? Well, just like in 210, uh, we can solve it with mesh analysis. Say, so, okay, we're going to go around our mesh. This is M1. And all the rises should equal all of the drops. All right? So, a battery that is something that supplies energy. So, that is definitely a rise. So, that'll 10 volts goes on the rise side and then everything else is just a drop right resistor inductor and capacitor they all absorb energy so that is supposed to equal the voltage of the resistor plus the voltage of the inductor plus the voltage of the capacitor okay so nothing crazy this is just the same thing as 210 all right now Let's take a look at this guy, voltage of the inductor. What is that? If we go back up, voltage, voltage of the inductor is L times DI on DT. Right, so this is going to be L times DI on DT. Okay, now what's the voltage of the capacitor? Go back up. Voltage of the capacitor is 1 over C times integral of I. So plus 1 over C times the integral of I. Okay, so now both of these terms are in terms of I now. Well, what's the voltage of a resistor? Well, hopefully you guys know this one. V equals IR, Ohm's law. Right, so we can just say voltage of the resistor will be I times R. And this equals 10. All right, so now we have taken the circuit and have it completely in terms of I. But let's get, let's get rid of this integral right here. So let's take the derivative of both sides of our equation. All right, so prime and prime. All right, so the derivative of a constant is just zero. And then this will equal 
So derivative of i would just be di on dt. So that will become di on dt times r plus l times, if we're taking the derivative of a derivative, that's just going to give us the second derivative. Right, so di on dt second derivative plus 1 over c and the derivative of an integral is just whatever is in front of that integral so that'll just be i. Now that's rearrange terms. So 0 equal L D I on DT second derivative plus D I on DT times R plus one over C times I. All right, so now notice this is a second order differential equation, right? Um, I so notice this is a second order differential equation right uh, this is the second derivative here's the first and then here is I so now we can solve this thing right um, and let's get rid of this L right out in front right, so 0 will equal di on dt the second derivative plus di on dt times r divided by l All right we're just dividing this entire equation by l plus 1 over c times l times i Right, and this is our final equation. So notice we didn't do anything crazy. We solved it the same way as we would have in 210, just doing mesh analysis. Just you have to go back to your best friends and plug in the right equations so that you'll end up with a second order differential equation. And in this video, I just wanted to go over the concepts. Uh, in the next video, we'll take a look at a problem and actually do one. Thanks, guys.